This video will demonstrate how to create a motion scatter chart in PowerView for SQL Server 2012 using FAA Wildlife Strike data. This video is a capstone to a series of articles and another video about how to pull in FAA Wildlife Strike data into a tabular model using Microsoft tools. The articles can be found at blog.genetgroup.com and there will be a corresponding blog article to this video which will contain a summary of all the links that you will need to go and recreate these reports for yourself. The Excel workbook, which contains the FAA Wildlife Strike Data dashboards, which were created with the PowerPivot data model, can be uploaded to SharePoint and can be available in the PowerPivot gallery. In the gallery, you can browse the different dashboards which were created in the carousel viewing mode, or you can actually open up those dashboards as web-enabled dashboards. So although this still looks like an Excel worksheet and works like an Excel worksheet in many ways, it's actually a web-enabled dashboard inside of Internet Explorer. You can see that the filters still work on the dashboard and you essentially have a functional dashboard which can be shared with different team members in an organization. Additionally, in SQL Server 2012, there is a new type of tool available, which is the focus of this video, which is called PowerView. So we'll go ahead and hit Create PowerView Report, and what this will do is take that tabular data model, which we created with PowerPivot, and it will pull it into a new type of dashboarding and reporting tool. So let's go ahead and select our first measure for the report, to start off, we'll select incidents, and this is a count of the number of incidents that happened. Next, we're going to switch to a scatter chart. The scatter chart has the new motion capabilities, which are a great way to display changes in information. And we'll drag that down and expand it. Next, we'll go ahead and put damage incidents on the y-axis. And we'll put average cost of repairs as the value which will determine the size of the bubbles on the scatter chart. Next, we'll select a dimensional attribute, aircraft mass as the determining factor for what separates the bubbles from one another down here in the details category. Now you can see that we clearly have a scatter chart where we have different bubbles separated by how large the aircrafts were and it's looking at on the y-axis the chances of damage occurring so out of all of the different incidents that happened what percentage of the time was there damage and then on the x-axis we have the actual number of incidents. Now we'll go ahead and add months to this category and what we'll do is we'll just add the actual calendar months. So it's just January through December but January will be January for the last 20 plus years. That way we have a very nice sample size to work with on the chart. We'll add that down here to the play axis. things back to January and now what you can see is that we have bubbles that represent the different sizes of aircrafts that struck wildlife. The size of the bubble is determined by the cost of the repairs. The y-axis is showing you once again the incidence of damage so how often did damage actually occur when a strike happened and the x-axis shows you a count of how many incidents actually happened. So now let's go ahead and expand this chart and let's go ahead and play the date axis. And as you can see, we can now see how those bubbles move throughout the course of a year. So what does that movement mean? Well, let's move back to January and let's focus just on this category, 27,000 to 272,000 kilogram aircraft. You can see that the 
uh, descriptive data will also come up if you hover over that bubble. You can see that for January, you had an average cost of repairs of $660,000 with a 14.6% damage incidence. Now, if we click on just that member, you can then come down to the date axis and actually move month to month, and you can see what happened. From January to February, you can see there were actually slightly fewer incidents. Moving into March, there's more. There may be migration patterns starting. Into April, there's even more. And the trend continues into June when it then backtracks a little bit. Then once again, you can see that things increase. And as you get into the fall, that's where the greatest number of incidents tend to happen for that size aircraft. Moving into winter, there's once again a dramatic decrease. So by using these scatter charts, you can not only visualize three different metrics against one another, but you can add that time axis in order to see how those three different metrics are changing over time. It gives you a way to visually comprehensively understand how these different factors are interacting with, the, with one another on this particular chart. So let's move to another example. So looking at the small aircraft, which appear to have the highest incidence of damage. Let's move back to January. And as you can see, moving through the year, the damage incidence actually increases, but the total number of incidents isn't that high. So once again, let's go back to the all level. And let's hit that play button one more time. So one more time with just a few minutes time, once you have that tabular model in place, you can create a motion scatter chart that gives you great in-depth insights into what's going on with your data. Once again, a blog post will be made available at blog.genetgroup.com, which will detail not only this video, but also all of the other articles and the other video which are a part of this series. The date on that blog article will be June 18th, 2012. For more information, please visit genetgroup.com or contact us at sales at genetgroup.com.